Welcome to another edition of On Point. I'm Vance Hansen, filling in for Ed DeRosa this week alongside James Scully. Uh, this week is uh, the pool number two for the Kentucky Derby Future Wager. Uh, betting started earlier today. Uh, the mutual field is the early morning favorite at four to five. Mo, Mo Heyman, the undefeated Holy Bull winner, is uh, tops among the individual entrants starting at eight to one morning line. Uh, a lot of wagers on him already so far today. James, uh, what do you think of uh, the Derby Future wagers this week? Well, I mean, you know, at the Pool 2, uh, we had a graphic up where every it, this is 18th year, and uh, every horse that was listed as individual interest that won the Derby, with the exception of Giacomo, has paid more in Pool 2 than he has uh, in the, uh, at, you know, at, at, on Derby Day. So it's a chance for value, even if you like one of the favorites. Uh, my take upon it is I'm, I'm looking at perhaps some um, uh, bigger prices with some, like, uh, less heralded horses than Mo Heyman or Nyquist or more Spirit. Uh, just to lock in a, a decent price. And a couple horses I'm taking a look at are uh, just uh, Dancing Candy, Gun Runner, uh, even uh, Whitmore, and uh, you know, a couple others uh, are, are a little interesting to me. Uh, my impression is, is that if you really like Mohamed like I do, uh, this is probably the week to get down on him because uh, before the next pool will be uh, offered, he'll be running in the Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream. He could be a blowout winner of that race. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, why not lock into a five, six to one price this week on uh, arguably the hottest horse uh, you know, on people's lips now as far as derby consideration is concerned. Absolutely, and you know, it's like, uh, you know, even last year, I mean, anybody that was playing, you know, liked American Pharaoh at this time, uh, you know, it was the same kind of rationale whereby you have a horse uh, in Mohamed who looks like he could be a short price on Derby Day, so I totally buy into that line of thinking. Well, in addition to the future wager this week, we also have uh, multiple Derby preps this weekend. Uh, tomorrow we have the El Camino Real Derby at Golden Gate, a race that hasn't had too much of an implication on the Derby in a number of years since the race was moved to a synthetic surface. However, it's a huge field. It looks like a good betting race. And, uh, and also at Tampa Bay Downs we have the Sam F. Davis. It's not a Derby point scoring race. However, it is a major lead into to ne to next month's Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, we know from your appearance on Steve Vick this morning that you do like Destin. I do. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, the Sam F. Davis, like you said, it's a short field, but there's lots of uh, contenders in there. You know, Morning Fire is uh, going two turns first time, but he looked good winning the Pasco. And uh, Rafting has a little bit of an upward trajectory potentially. And, you know, the big concern with him a little bit is Grand Motion. Uh, his barn has been real cold of late, but, uh, you know, he could help uh, turn things around uh, if he runs big. And then Pletcher has a, a two of the main uh, contenders in Gettysburg, who's the only individual. Uh, uh, interest in pool two of the future wager uh, in the field it comes off a nice maiden win and I wound up going with Destin who uh, a full brother to creative cause I liked his uh, debut win uh, his next start took a little bit of a step back but I thought that uh, in the uh, Lecomte uh, the, he finished up well you know after appearing to be in trouble uh, leaving the far turn and I just think that hey he's a horse that's moving forward has a potentially a big upside and, you know and could get the right trip uh, off the speed in that field uh, the El Camino Real Derby uh, one horse of interest in there to me is Mr. Coker uh, Hollendorfer Santa Anita maiden winner he ran second to Dancing Candy the first time and it will be his first synthetic start but he obviously has a chance in there going back to Grand Motion he has a cast Cassiopeia, who will be making his first start for the barn, but like synthetic tracks running second in the gray. And of course, the morning line favorite, Frank Conversation, after winning the California Derby uh, pretty easily, uh, is definitely one of the horse to beat, uh, at least on paper. Yeah. Going back to Destin real quick, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I like him a lot more than Gettysburg. Those are the only two uh, Triple Crown nominees in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, Gettysburg is coming off just a maiden win. This will be his first time against winners. Uh, he concedes a lot of experience to Destin in that regard. Destin broke his maiden very impressively, like you said, back in, uh, in New York back in the fall. So I expect Destin to run well. And uh, just a brief look over of the El Camino. I, I kind of like the favorites in that race. Cassiopeia ran second in the gray stakes at Woodbine. And then Frank Conversation comes off a big win in the Cal Derby. It looks like those mm -hmm. two should, might possibly dominate that. 
Uh, President's Day Monday, uh, two more major preps, the Southwest and the San Vicente. Both races are being drawn as we speak. The Southwest is going to have a big field. It's going to look a lot like uh, the Smarty Jones with discreetness in there. Bob Baffert, who's won the Southwest multiple times in recent years, will have collected his sham winner running in. But uh, the main focus on Monday, I think, will be the seven furlong San Vicente. Uh, undefeated juvenile champion Nyquist comes back. This will be his uh, preliminary prep for a possible start in the Florida Derby. Exaggerator, uh, a multiple graded stakes winner last year, is also in that short field. Uh, uh, what do you think of those two races? Well, I mean, definitely San Vicente, highly anticipated. You know, I'm looking at that race as more of a race to scout, uh, you know, but just to see what happens. And Doug O'Neill even said uh, uh, here recently that they're not 100% uh, committed to the Florida Derby. They'll reassess where they are after the San Vicente. Uh, I think a lot of people are sort of a little doubtful that that's the best way to get them to the Kentucky Derby is just those two preps, one sprint and one race at Gulfstream. But... Uh, it remains to be seen uh, if he comes back and looks sharp. You know, he's definitely uh, have a lot of uh, uh, talks surrounding him going forward. And the Southwest, you know, I mean, like you mentioned with Baffert, uh, collected is 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 going to compete for favoritism off of that sham win. But that race has been a little bit panned for being a slower race, lower speed rating. We gave him, I think, a Bruce eighty nine speed rating, but. Um, you know, he's obviously a contender. Uh, I've mentioned Whitmore before, who's in there. And, of course, uh, Synchrony, who ran uh, third in the Smarty Jones, is for his stakes debut. I think he's a horse that has a chance to move forward. So that, that really does come up as an exciting betting race. Yeah, it's going to be a really good betting race. And uh, I agree with you on the San Vicente. It's more of a scouting type of race. Uh, no matter how Nyquist does, you know, if he wins by four or five lengths or a length or less, you know, we're not going to learn a whole lot more out of him based on this one seven furlong race. The uh, impression so far has been that he might have be a horse that's going to have some distance limitations later on. Uh, we're not going to learn a whole lot about his uh, derby uh, future, I think, until we see him around two turns going a mile on an right. a little bit later. And I think, you know, one take is, and it, you know, perhaps, you know, it's been small fields and slower paces contributing to it, but even with, like, more spirit and uh, Mohamed, uh, neither one of them has really earned a big number, at least in, you know, in their race this year. And uh, if Nyquist runs and runs a real fast race and earns a real big number, it, it will really, like, ramp up, uh, you know, the excitement factor, I think, surrounding him because uh, everybody's really waiting for for that one performance to really. I mean, Mohamed was uh, visually impressive, but that race had no pace, and his main rival, Greenpoint Crusader, was on the lead that day. So, I, I well, you know, well, I'm just waiting to see, you know, and with Nyquist, Exaggerator really provides a good gauge. You know, that just is shaping up to be uh, a, a good matchup. Well, there's going to be a lot to analyze in the coming days, and uh, follow follow the Derby Trail on Twinspires.com and the Twinspires.com uh, blog. Uh, James and I will be analyzing and writing about the races this weekend, recapping them, and uh, we'll be joining you. I'll be joining uh, James again next week on On Point, and until then, uh, happy Derby. All right. Best of luck, everybody.